Hello YouTube and fellow DC Comic fans! I'm Keith OneShot, and I just got done reading Batman number 50, The Wedding Issue, and I wanted to quickly go over and tell you what I think about the issue, briefly what happened, and I will reveal the ending, so spoiler alert in advance, I will reveal the ending of Batman number 50. So, I do think that the artwork throughout the book is really amazing, and I think that it was a really great idea to have all these different Batman artists over the years. Some of my favorite is, uh, Jason Fabic, uh, I do like Jim Lee's, and I like uh, Finch's as well. There's a lot of art going on here, and it's very incredible. And they do go out and make a point to comment on the bottom who drew that art. Um, I am very comfortable, and I have grown used to the uh, DC Rebirth Batman art, so the normal artwork that is, that is in the book is uh, all the present day stuff that's happening in it. And in the present day, we basically got Selina and Bruce are getting ready for their wedding. They need to find a judge, and they each need to find a witness. So Selina actually goes to Arkham, and she gets Holly Robinson, who in Rules of Engagement, she went and got from Talia Al Ghul, because Talia was hiding Holly Robinson, but Selina needed to prove her innocence, so she needed to get Holly Robinson so she could go to jail, but she wants Holly to be her witness, as they're friends that go way, way back, and Selina has always trusted Holly, and they have a lot of mutual respect, so that's her witness. And then there's a part where Alfred is like, Master Bruce, shall I call up Master Dick? Oh, Master Clark, who shall be your best man? And Bruce is like, Nah, bro. It's you, Alfred. Are you busy? You're my best man. You've been there since the beginning. Even though, in actual comic book history, uh, Dick Grayson was created before Alfred Pennyworth, but either way, as opposed to the story and what we've come to accept over the years, Alfred and Bruce have been there since the very beginning as he raised Bruce Wayne after his parents died. Speaking of that, we see Selina getting into her dress, and she's kind of questioning things. Is the dress, does it look good, does it look right? And Holly's trying to fix it, and meanwhile Bruce is like, Oh, uh, this is crazy, this doesn't look right, I actually look like my dad. And Alfred's like, you do look like your father, Master Wayne, and that's incredible. And I thought that was really fun. Um, so they then they're getting ready for their wedding, and in between, when it shows the different art, we keep seeing their vows. And in their vows, it goes from Batman on one page, and it goes Catwoman's vows on the other. And Batman's talking about how he looked into Selina's eyes every time they met over the years. And he saw hope and possibility, and that he could change himself, and that he could love, and he could hope to do this, and still love Selina. And that he's willing to change, and that he doesn't want to be this boy in pain anymore. And Selina, on her side, talks about she'd never seen his eyes, because his, uh eyes or have the white the white over his eyes so that his enemies don't know who he is and that always intrigued her but she sees through that and she sees the boy that's in pain and the, a, a thing that's happening in this book is Bruce keeps saying that he's gonna change and he wants to change and he wants to learn more about uh, Selena in general and she's a mystery to him a story that he can never write but he always wants to learn more about her and he wants to change himself and be happy and meanwhile Selena is wondering if changing Bruce, if making him happy, is going to stop him from being Batman. Because if he's not Batman, then he can't stop the villains. Joker, in the last issue, made a point to say, if Bruce is happy, if Batman is happy, he's not going to be here to stop me. And I'm going to kill everybody if Batman's here to stop me. Or not here to stop me. So she wonders if she wants to change him. Then we kind of start seeing Holly Robinson kind of like reinforcing this concept to Selina and saying like, I've never seen him like this. We've known Batman for years, and he's always sad and angry and miserable, and maybe he needs that to fight crime. And Selina starts, she already believes this herself, and Holly is kind of reinforcing this thought process into Selina. And meanwhile, Bruce is embracing Alfred, and he's believing that he can change, and that his life can get better and get happy, and he wants that for himself. And that's something that he's wanted ever since the button when he saw his father, and he's been questioning that ever since the button. And this is, there's a kind of thing that's been building up with Batman over the background since the button, and a little bit before that, is it seems like they're trying to build Batman up and crush him, and weigh him down, and to get him to doubt himself. And he did doubt himself, and that's why he wanted to change himself and be happy. And his father said to him in the Flashpoint timeline, but his, Thomas Wayne during the button in the Flashpoint timeline said, you need to find your family, you need to be happy and stop being Batman. But we also wonder, in general, even back then, why were Flash and Batman sent to that specific timeline? It was almost like 
this greater thing that's happening in DC Rebirth is pushing these characters in certain directions to try to weaken their bonds and to make them fall and be uh, less than they are and to doubt themselves. And that's been happening in Batman and he's finally believing throughout uh, Batman's solo story that he can change and he can be better and he wants to be better. And so he wants this wedding to happen. But then we see Selina start chickening out and she realizes that if she makes Bruce happy, he won't be Batman. So she believes in what Holly's saying. And then we see the both of them on the roof and Selina's up there and she leaves. And Bruce is waiting around and he never sees Selina on the roof. And then eventually he leaves. And we get to the end of the book where we see a lot of art. We're reading the uh, um, letters that they wrote for themselves or for each other. And they've come to the same conclusion is that she's going to leave him and she's not going to get married because that's going to change him. And he wants to change. And that truly crushes Bruce Wayne because he wanted that. And I can relate to that as hell. It's like you want to change with all your heart and you want to be better and you want positive things. But the best thing that the other person thinks for you is for you to be separated so you can truly be yourself. And that hurts. That's going to crush Bruce Wayne a lot. And I can relate with that a lot. So that feeling kind of weighs down on me a little bit and I feel sad for Bruce Wayne and that kind of be kind of is like the, the trend with Bruce Wayne's life is sadness and the curse of Batman and I kind of like that because that even leads up to uh Heroes in Crisis a little bit which Tom King is writing as well because Batman's going to be hurt after this he's probably going to Sanctuary um we then see that the big reveal is that Holly Robinson goes back to Arkham and Bane and all the other villains like Riddler, Joker, Gotham Girl, which I'm surprised. There's a guy in a Batman suit, so I'm assuming that's Hush. We see Scarface, we see Hugo Strange. They even see uh, Skeet, the robot, is like either broken or sitting there, and they're all sitting on skulls. And Bane says, the bat is broken. And that ends the story. That's crazy. So they've been manipulating Batman behind the scenes. And yeah, I feel bad for our dude. I do like the story overall. I think the artwork is amazing. A few artists stuck out better than others, um, but overall I really liked the issue. I think it was clean and simple, and the pacing of the story was well. Went well. I do think it was a little predictable, especially with the Catwoman title, and she seems to be on her own in that. Um, if you haven't heard in my last video, which was my weekly comic book haul, I did start up a partnership with ComicBookCorps.com, where I'm going to be reviewing uh, comic books, uh, writing reviews, and not the... the style that I'm doing right now. I recently did The Unexpected number 2. You can go to comicbookcorps.com and check that out and check out the other great reviews. And if you like the content, make sure to like and subscribe. To, like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out the rest of the content. I'm Keith One Shot. Take care, have a great day, and goodbye. So I know I just said take care, have a great day, and goodbye, but I cannot have a great day. Because while editing the video, I just noticed something on the last page of Batman issue number 50. In the group of villains, off in the back right corner, I said that it might have been Hush. I'm realizing now that this might go even deeper than that. That is Flashpoint Batman. He's got the pointy shoulders, and the symbol's got the red behind the bat, and the bat's drawn in a certain way. I think that this goes even deeper into the DC Rebirth lore, and it touches in on the button even deeper than we thought, as that was like a fractured timeline that we were able to enter back into as it was like being held together and existed just so Batman and Flash could go to that moment. And like I said before in this review, I think that forces have been trying to expose Batman, Flash, and the rest of the DC villains, or DC heroes rather, to feel weakened and to weaken their bonds and their strengths and to break them as it seems the villains of Batman have done in this issue. But I think that it goes even further. I think that they might have set this up because they have a broken skeet robot, or maybe it's a functioning skeet robot. They might have purposely found a way to use Booster Gold's technology to go inside of this uh, Flashpoint timeline that still existed, or it might have been fake to begin with, because they specifically went to the Batcave, and if they had skeet, they would be able to know about Flashpoint, and they might have even learned about Flashpoint through Psycho Pirate's mask because Bane is leading it and Bane was working closely with Psycho Pirate and his mask uh, interacted with the button and that kind of started the whole thing of the button to begin with. So I think that they might have even manipulated the events of the, of the button which is crazy to me and that's very interesting and I want to look even closer to this and I'm wondering if this is going to have to do with Heroes in Crisis coming up. Like I said before, Tom King is writing that but I just wanted to talk about this 
very uh, briefly here because I did notice that that's Thomas Wayne Batman right there. And that's the Skeet robot down there, which is Booster Gold's robot. So I want to know what's going on. And I know that Booster Gold is one of the suspects on who killed somebody inside a sanctuary. And Booster Gold did go a little crazy. And that did involve Batman when he saw in uh, Booster Gold the booster shot, the gift storyline there uh, recently, a few issues back in Batman, where he created this alternate timeline. And then that alternate timeline, Bruce wanted his parents to be saved so Booster took him back to the night where his parents got killed in our timeline and that Bruce Wayne saw his parents get shot and our Bruce Wayne was a kid back then but the adult Bruce Wayne and Brewster, Booster were on the roof at the night that his parents got shot and then that Bruce Wayne from the alternate timeline shot himself and blood splattered on Booster Gold's uh, visors. Oh man, I, I'm very uh, intrigued about what's going on here. This is a real, take care, have a great day, and goodbye!